15.2 talks about developing and retaining employees. What happened to our screen? All right, let's try that again. This particular section are to identify responsibilities of human resource managers and um, after they've hired a new employee. So recruiting is a big part of it, but once they hire a new employee, their job does not stop. And then we want to discuss or describe how the status of employees can change. So developing employees, um, even people with experience need to adjust to new jobs. And so you may have to learn new skills and need to keep track of how they're doing on the job. So to develop as employees, they need to be orientated, trained, and evaluated. And human resources uh, staff mem members assist in this process. So orientation is the process of helping new employees adjust to a company. So you're hired and you come to orientation. So a lot of times that usually includes a tour of the facilities being introduced to other employees. Uh, you might include a, or sorry, intend a group orientation session and watch a video about the company. Most new employees receive a manual that offers information on matters such as the company's organization, procedures, and safety rules. And also, uh, you'll probably have to read and, and sign the policies, uh, code of ethics and the company policies because these documents give details about the company's goals and appropriate employee behavior. So when we're hired as teachers, um, the very first week of the school year, before students show up, before even old faculty show up, is there's a week of new teacher orientation, which we go through the process of helping new teachers adjust to being at the school. So then we have training. So new employees usually need some sort of training for the specific job they were hired to do. So on-the-job training involves learning the new job by actually doing it. And then of course that's done under some sort of guidance um, of a supervisor who can demonstrate how to do it as well. Then um, another way to, to have training is a bit more relaxed. It's called group training. And this involves teaching several employees in a class-like setting. So the instructor, instructor or manager might teach a group of employees how to use a new software program at the same time. So we do this a lot at school on our professional development days. We'll have group training to learn how to new, do Evernote or changes to the gradebook system or something like that. So another thing that is commonly done um, to help train employees is job rotation. So this moves employees to different tasks or departments to help them gain experience. Sometimes if workers are absent or on leave, others have to be able to step in and handle their job. So um, you can rotate around to learn how to do that job. I also, job rotation helps prevent boredom and increases morale because you're doing something new and it's not the same old, same old. So morale is a term that means it's the general level of confidence or enthusiasm felt by a person or a group of people. So employee morale is a really big thing that um, HR, human resources, looks at. So another thing with um, training is developing soft skills. So soft skills refer to personality traits and personal abilities such as social skills, language skills, personal habits, and friendliness. So soft skills complement the hard skills, which are technical requirements. Uh, you can develop soft skills now. We can work on this now. Dressing professionally and being organized, being punctual, dependable, and taking initiative and responsibility for tasks. Integrity, a positive attitude, respect for yourself and others. Um, these are important workplace characteristics that you want to have. So trying to improve your problem solving, decision making, and reasoning skills by thinking through issues, these are good skills to go ahead and start doing. So evaluate yourself and identify areas that you want to work on now. Don't wait until you're 23 years old trying to get a job. All right, and then the last thing that HR uh, managers are uh, responsible for doing is evaluating the employees. So a performance appraisal is the evaluation of how well an employee is doing in their job. And this, is, this happens periodically. So uh, you could have a review every month. If you're a new hire, usually you're on, hired on a probation basis. So they could um, evaluate you at the end of 90 days to see how well you're doing. Are you catching on or are you still falling behind? Um, and then maybe at six months and then at a year. Normally, uh, performance appraisals are every six months or every year. 
And that's something that goes in your work file to be kept with HR over the course of your tenure at the company. So during this evaluation, um, HR managers will comment on your strengths and your weaknesses as an employee, and then offer some sort of suggestions on how to improve. All right, and then this leads to changes in employee status. So human resources keep track of changes in the status of employees. So if you are promoted to a different position or transferred to another department or fired, um, as a result, the worker might need to be reoriented, retrained, or replaced. So the first way of changing your employee status is a promotion. So a promotion gives an employee a higher job level with more authority and responsibility and pay. So most promotions are merit-based and encourage performance, meaning you've worked to get there, you've earned that because of your hard work and your, your abilities. If an employee is doing a great job, he or she might be promoted. Promotions are also given on the basis of seniority. Seniority is the status given to an employee based upon rank or length of service. So you've been there the longest, so you're going to get promoted. Most companies don't really do seniority as much as they used to because it's not based upon ability. Just because somebody's been there for a long time doesn't necessarily mean they're the most qualified for that position. So seniority still happens, but it's not as common as merit-based. The second way of changing an employee's status is a transfer. So a transfer is when you move from one job to another job within the same company. And you're not really changing... Uh, your level of pay or your level of authority, you're just going into a new job and it's going to be your permanent one from that point on. So um, employees might be transferred because another department needs them or their job in the present department has been eliminated and they're being reshuffled. They may also be transferred in the com if the company moves or open its, opens a new office. So they're going to open up a new branch and they want people to go to that location. And then the last change of employee status is separation. And this is when you leave the company for whatever reason. Voluntary separation means you resign, usually because you're going to go work somewhere else. Um, you know, this happens when teachers decide to leave one school to go work for another school. They're not fired or anything, they just resign because they're going to take a new opportunity somewhere. Um, or you retire because you've worked there long enough or you've worked in general long enough and now you're not going to work anymore. So you're gonna quit your job and live off of your retirement account. So that's a voluntary separation. And then um, involuntary separations are what we call layoffs and terminations. So terminations are when you're fired because you have broken a rule or you're not performing at the expected level for your, your job qualifications um, or you're just not getting along with your coworkers and you're creating an unpleasant work environment. So any number of reasons can lead to you being uh, terminated or fired. The, HR termination is terminated. Um, the other reason is if the company has to downsize, meaning they can no longer afford to have as many employees or don't need as many employees, so they are going to have to lay off um, some workers. So a layoff is a little bit different because it's not that you're being let go um, from your company because you weren't doing a good job or you're not a pleasant person to work with or anything like that. It just means that they can't keep as many employees and so they, they can't hire, keep you on, on the payroll anymore. Usually when you're laid off, you're given benefits to help with the transition process as you look for a new job. So all of this changing, though, um, is called turnover. So it costs companies a lot of money to hire employees and train new employees. So therefore, you know, businesses are concerned about keeping this turnover low. So technically speaking, the definition for turnover is the number of employees who leave an organization and have to be replaced over time. So the careful hiring decisions and the sufficient training increases the chances of being successful with these new employees so that you're not having to replace them later. And that is it for human resources.